Welcome to Let Freedom Ring. Uh, my guest this week, uh, the host of Politics and Playoffs, Playoffs Stephen and Den- Politics. I'm sorry. Close. Oh, I wrote that down wrong. <laughs> Playoffs and Politics, Stephen Dennis. Stephen, hey, how are you? It's a, a pleasure to be here, Dan. Uh, six months since I last saw you in person, uh, even though we uh, connected for one of these shows over quarantine. But uh, happy to be here. Excited. It's a, a beautiful studio you got here. You got the fall uh little uh, spooky season uh, out here, so I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I apologize. So, no, so right. playoffs and politics. I wrote down politics and playoffs. It's all right. I talk about those two things <laughs> in, in either order. It's, it's up to whatever crazy story happens that week. It's funny. I've, I've yet to mess up a last name. Yeah. So... Well, uh, that, yeah. well, that I would have just walked off set. So. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, edit that out later if you can. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways... Uh, the audience has already got to know you a little bit, but let's let's talk. How how you been doing since the last time you've been on the show? Yeah, um, a lot has happened. Obviously, quarantine um, definitely gotten used to it a little bit more, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, like the the isolation settle, setting in, um, but definitely trying to take more advantage of the time that I have. Uh, so I've really ramped up my podcast. Um, you know, since quarantine kicked off um, been having some great interviews some great guests so really putting in a lot more time into that that i sort of lose under what seems like normal days and time so understandable any uh any guests that you've had on lately that really stick out in your mind have been been really good yeah so i um i interviewed at the height of um the george floyd protest which seemed like it was forever ago but um i did interview a a former uh organizer and and employee of the the bernie sanders campaign um you know she's a fantastic woman she was my introduction into that campaign and you know she happens to be uh you know a proud woman of color and, and getting her perspective um on the issues that were going on you know for a lot of you know myself who who you know you can claim to know what's going on but you're not living in that you know skin you you don't really know what it's like so to get that perspective it was a really powerful uh episode awesome awesome well um no and uh, i'm glad do you know they're doing well and everything yes yes surviving so uh let's take us right into current events um so disney huge uh corporation obviously uh just laid off uh 28,000 employees uh due to the pandemic Mm -hmm. Uh, any take on that and how, obviously, Disney is huge. Yeah. These are people's lives that we're talking about. And, mm-hmm. you know, can these theme parks bounce back? Yeah, so I think the interesting thing is that 67% of the people that were laid off were part-time employees. Okay. Uh, so not, you know, people that really depend on these hours and this pay to, to really make a living. Um, another interesting fact when I when I looked at when I saw the story and started looking into it um, was in August Disney returned their executives to pre COVID salaries so they had all taken a pay cut because of the pandemic like a lot of executives have Um, but in August they moved back to their normal full-time salaries and then a month later 28,000 people (laughs) are are laid off so um, you know I think it's it's a consequence of not taking the virus seriously enough as we could have you know we we really could have been out of this mess by now um and unfortunately there are a lot of people with serious consequences because of that now do you think uh well obviously disney will survive but uh, what uh, what even it's open Mm -hmm. so what i don't know what's even going on there uh so it's open at uh i saw the the chief executive of the um the West Coast branch. I always forget. Is it Disney World or Disneyland out there on the West Coast? You got Disney, oh Disney World down I think down in Florida. south. Yep. Yeah. Um, but whichever one runs the California operation basically blamed the state of California for their strict um, COVID laws. So about physical distancing, about the capacity of the theme parks, and that was his uh, explanation as to why this laying off of twenty eight thousand people was inevitable. But um, Again, I just think it's a consequence of not, you know, poor leadership from the top of the country down to not taking the virus seriously enough. It was obviously going to have an effect on our economy like it did, you know, in the spring. And, you know, even though the stock market has recovered, we can see, you know, just this Disney example is a prime one that these companies and people are going to continue to suffer real consequences from it. 
Well, and you say that like leadership is um, not taken seriously. Is the governor of Florida take it seriously? I mean, they've opened up everything. Yep. Yeah. No masks uh, are not required anymore. Um, yeah, I saw after the uh, the U's football game after Miami's uh, game this weekend, packed bars. Uh, like celebrating the Tampa the, Bay the, uh, Lightning celebrations too. You yeah, know? Um, and again, I just think we're sort of prolonging this thing that we could could really wrap up if it was taken taken seriously. And, and you know, I I hate this more than the next person. Um, you know, but I, I'm trying to just do my part. Yep. Because I feel like if everyone does their part and and does take it seriously, um, I, I think we can get past this. And and what's funny is that. So your show is is Let Freedom Ring. Great, great title. Um, I've been on it before. You always ask, what does freedom mean uh, to you? And I think Americans really have a, a sort of warped concept of what freedom means, um, where where to them, to, to a lot of Americans, they think it means, well, I can just do whatever I want without um, worrying about what impact it has on other people. And there are a lot of democratic countries and societies around the world that it doesn't operate that way. Like, like you have freedom, but if it's going to start to negatively impact your neighbor, then you have to seriously, you know, put yourself into check there. And I think that that is something, again, this has been going on for six months now, six plus really. Almost seven. (laughs) Um, And it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, we went from it supposing, you know, supposedly being gone in April uh, to it still being around and still impacting everyone. So, no, no, I totally agree with a lot of that. And, and yeah, it, you know, and I feel like, I don't feel like it's everybody. I feel like there is a selfish part of the population that takes us all back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I just think there there's a, um, in the United States, there is this sort of, um, you know, I, I feel like people are inherently selfish. And that's just like a, a generic, like, I mean, we're all sort of, at the end of the day, every man for themselves, every man or woman for themselves. But, um I think a lot of people, the people that are not taking it as seriously are the ones that probably have it the cushiest and, you know, they're not really hurting. Um, So they're being mildly inconvenienced by having to wear a mask, by having to work from home, by having to homeschool their kids, which I understand is, is a struggle. But if that's your inconvenience, you know, a lot of us talk about like how much of a pain it is to work from home. Like, at least we have a, a home to work in. <laughs> yeah. At least we have a job. Yeah. You know, I see these terrible photos of kids outside of uh, Taco Bell drive throughs uh, using the Wi-Fi from the, the, you know, if you want to call it a restaurant, um, <laughs> to do their schoolwork. I mean, it's like, and and you can't wear a mask and, and socially distance. I think that is just sort of, um, like you said, selfish. No, I think you're 100% right on that. I mean, we've been both lucky to have a job throughout yeah. this. And um yeah, there's people that didn't. So yeah, totally get that. Uh, Massachusetts is now starting to see a peak again. Um, I don't have the exact number, um, but the ICU cases uh, are at the most they've been since uh, July 4th. Mm-hmm. Um, and Boston did not move on to the next phase and some other cities. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> is Massachusetts uh, going backwards or... Well, I think what's what's interesting is um, Massachusetts is is probably representative of most states out there. Um, you know, I, I remember Dr. Fauci saying um, over the summer that if we didn't get the virus down to ten thousand new uh, confirmed cases a day, then we would be screwed for the fall. Um, and it's October first, and we're seeing. <laughs> Most states in the country uh, starting to to rise up again as we send kids back to school and and we just um, should we be surprised like Probably at that not. at that outcome right Probably I mean not. I think we're sort of fooling <laughs> ourselves if we're shocked by the numbers going up when we're sending people back into to schools employers are bringing their employees back to work um, again it's just sort of prolonging this disaster that we you know, maybe if we actually work together and use some common sense, which seems to be lacking um, out there, we could have gotten past this by now. So Now, because now, I've said on the show a couple times that we need to learn to live with this. Um, what would you say that looks like? Living with it. Um, I certainly think, and it's weird too, like when I see pictures or videos of 
pre-pandemic, it sort of weirds me out a little bit. Like I see like a full sporting venue, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know if Those I would, I don't, I don't know if I would, <laughs> yeah. right? You, yeah. you remember the good times, but I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I would do that yeah. now. Um, I do think it's going to really shift. Definitely work culture. I think um, you know, peop- a lot of companies around the country are figuring out: Do they really need to drag their employers, their employees, into work every day? I think that's going to be probably the biggest change that we see. Um, but I also, I also do think mask wearing in certain instances is going to become part and parcel of our culture, like we do see in a lot of uh, you know countries Japan, overseas, China, right, yeah. right. Uh, and I, so I do think it's going to become something that we have to live with. Um, and a lot of scientists, and again, people can debate the science, you know, until, you know, they're blue in the face, but um, they've said that things like this coronavirus are gonna become more and more common. So, you know, as we progress into the future, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if in another 10 or 20 years, there's another one of these, so. So I, I've had guests on the show say we're not sh- they're not sure if masks work. Do you believe that they work? Yeah, I mean, or at least at least I, I don't think they're perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you think they they're having an impact? Yeah, I believe. Um, I mean, listen, I am I am a professional skeptic, and I am someone that if something comes in front of you, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Um, I got mine in my pocket. Right yeah, now. I was. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> It, like, it, you know, if you don't question things, like, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. But, um, and I understand the CDC has made mistakes. The World Health Organization has made mistakes. This has been an emergency pandemic where information is constantly flooding. News is constantly changing. So, of course, when the CDC says a month into the pandemic, no, you don't need a mask. Like, that... that should cause people, you know, to question things a little bit. But I agree. Um, but again, yeah. information changes so quickly, and the virus mutates as well. You know, at one point they're worrying that it could, you know, um, surface to, you know, you could get infected by surfaces. Now that's not really the case. But again, it's a mutating virus, and and these things change. And I think the right now we're being told that it spreads via the air. So. If you're within six feet social dis- uh, and unable to social distance, I do think you should be wearing a mask if you're concerned for the person around you. See, I, I, I agree. I think masks do work. Um, the CDC is even saying now that that could work better than a uh, vaccine. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a minor inconvenience. Uh, we've been arguing about it a lot, but uh, yeah, I just I just think it's it's a basic empathetic thing to do is and the least bit inconveniencing is yeah. is wearing a mask. So, and those people that I see giving um, grocery store clerks a hard time, and like I, I think those people need to really look in the mirror. Um, you know about you know their concern is you know big government trying to control <laughs> their lives. It's like I don't know if you necessarily have a handle on your own lives if you're you know holding up everyone at the store because the person's asking you to to put on a mask. It's almost laughable. You yeah, know. that's a word I use a lot. Yeah. You know, um, I don't I don't leave home without one. Mm-hmm. I have so many at this point. Yeah. So it's and I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. Fall fashion's coming in. I'm sure you can get a <laughs> couple couple good ones. So. Maybe we'll get a you know Halloween related. Exactly. Uh, mask Look great on the pumpkin. But these uh, these what, what is this one? This is a uh, N95. I mean, mm-hmm. these are supposedly the best that you can get. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, we're gonna go into politics. I, I have a I have a question I really want to ask you. And uh, I'll answer the same question. Okay. Because I, I think it's an easy one. I think this is a softball question mm-hmm. uh, if you're a decent human being. Yeah. Uh, do you, Stephen, uh, would you condemn white supremacy on this show right now? Well, Dan, Stephen Dennis of the Playoffs and Politics podcast does swear to condemn white supremacy, Nazis, racists in any form that they take. And I think any lack of doing that is disqualifying of you from certainly the executive level of government, but really from being a participating and functioning member of society in 2020. I agree, and I'll say the same. Uh, Dan Bollier of uh, Let Freedom Ring, uh, I condemn white supremacy without even really thinking about it, uh, and disgust me that I have a president that does not. 
if you have a problem with that, don't watch my show. P plain and simple. And, and, you know, yeah, I think that was easy. Yeah. That was pretty easy. Yeah, that didn't the, really... Rolled off the tongue you know, pretty, pretty easily. <laughs> and, mean... <laughs> and you did the same putting it on a tee as, as Chris Wallace and Joe Biden did the other night during the debate, and Trump still swung and missed. And um, I think if there was any question when he both sides uh, during the, you know, after effects of Charlottesville, when he said there are bad people on both sides and people could, you know, people on the right and his supporters defended him and say, well, he, you know, he quickly corrected himself a couple of days later and, and said that, you know, there were pe bad people on both sides, but, you know, I condemn white supremacy. I don't think after the other night, uh, where I think 117 million people watched the debate or tuned in. I don't think there's any question anymore as to what side of that that history that he's on. He, he just he thinks that they'll help him for for whatever. That's his reason, base. I, I why why would Donald Trump condemn white supremacy when he himself is a white supremacist? Yeah, I, I it, it you know it disgusts me that that we're at this point. Um, but he's always done that. You know, it, it goes back to the, the, you know, 2016. Well, I don't know. I, I, who's David Duke? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Who, everybody knows who David Duke is. Okay. That, Birtherism before that. You know. You know, questioning Obama's birth certificate just because, you know, he, you know, doesn't look, you know, what is it? What? Because he's he's not white. He doesn't look like an American. Like. And you bring up a good point. That's something not talked about a lot. Why? Why? Why was that ever a thing? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I mean, Trump has a long history of, of being a racist and, and yeah. doing things that negatively affect minority populations. He used to brutalize them with his um, tenant policies when he was you know, in charge of real estate in New York City. Um, the whole Central Park Five, where he basically got those five innocent kids. You know, he took out a front page ad. Right, in the right. New York he Times, he yeah. used his power and influence to... Um, and his dad's money, which is not his, um, to, to really ruin those kids' lives. And he's ruined a lot of people's lives. And um, I think the something to point out, though, and, and again, is that what we see going on right now is not a creation of Donald Trump. He is a symptom of, of this. The bigger you know, problem, yeah. You know, th these people have existed in America. These ideas have existed in America for since its inception. And Donald Trump is just the first person with the... Um, lack of awareness and the the will to really um, try and profit off of that, and and that's the scary part is that you see these people that under just four to five years ago, maybe they have those same beliefs, but they keep them you know online online in their do, chat yeah. rooms, and now the the dog whistle is a full holler right now. Yeah, no, I agree. I makes me sick uh the you know what we're gonna get into that in a mm -hmm. second you kind of answered the next question because i was gonna ask why why can't trump denounce them um because there is that's his base that's, yeah i and i mean there were a lot of people that voted for donald trump for a lot of different reasons and yep. um you know not all of them were white supremacists and racists but i do think in order to vote for donald trump you have to be okay with a lot of that. Um, you know, you have to, you have to swallow a lot of the racism, the sexism, the xenophobia. You have to, you have to be okay with a lot of that to then come and say, well, you know, he's a businessman. There's a lot of, you know, grenades you have to walk over to get to. Well, he's a businessman and he's not a politician. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's his, that's his, his calling card. Yeah. You, you ultimately, it's tough because I have a lot of Trump friends mm -hmm. and uh, it is what it is. I mean, it's 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 a tough, we're all on a tough thing because he is the president, mm -hmm. you know, so you really start to see like, it's just, it's insane. But I also, I also <laughs> think, I mean, it's another example of, you know, he, he likes to talk about how, um, you know, Democrats or the radical left want to make people hate America. Yeah. and want to teach our school children the bad things about America and make them you know unpatriotic but he's doing that himself yeah. I mean the other night was an absolute disgrace on the debate stage and um, you know it, it's just showing that all is not as squeaky clean as we thought I mean there's a big debate about the Supreme Court where you know 
I remember growing up thinking like judges in Supreme Court, they were impartial, they always sided on what was right. And then you do a little research and you're like, the Supreme Court at one point said, like upheld slavery in the country. Yeah, It's like, so not as all as squeaky and clean as everyone would like it to be. Well, and, and I think our country is always evolving because we've not been, we've not been perfect. We have not. Um, it's an and American I don't, experiment. I don't want to take steps back and he's taken those steps back. Um, I guess the, uh, one other question that uh, we didn't really have on the agenda, because a lot of conservatives are mentioning this, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's a fair, uh, a fair comparison. They said Biden did not condemn Antifa. Any thoughts on that? Hmm. The FBI has said they're not a group; they're an I they're an idea. Yep. yep. Um, I, I think this is something. You're, yeah, you're I mean, get knowledgeable on. I mean, I would say first. Um, yes, the, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security have both listed white nationalist groups, white supremacist groups within the United States as the number one threat uh, to and, violence. And the Proud in, Boys is in that. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. and again, if you're, if you don't live online, like this is, uh, this is, I had in an interview I did yesterday with someone that's not really on Twitter often, yeah. like you can really, I can guarantee you probably three quarters of the people watching that debate the other night were like, who the hell are the Proud Boys? Um, but they, the, the issues that you see in Portland that get painted as this Antifa uprising, they are in response to Proud Boys taking to the streets and yeah. harassing LGBTQ members of society, harassing any sort of liberal, you know, Portland and Seattle uh, and, and the Northwest obviously is sort of like a liberal area. Um, but they are sort of the we're taking our country back type of, of crew. And Antifa is, it, it's, it's an idea. It's not an organization. Our, our federal government and our intelligence communities say that. Um, Trump's at, FBI has said that. Trump's <laughs> FBI person has said that. Not a single person has died at the hands of someone from an anti-fascist group since the early 90s when someone from that group killed themselves. So to equate white supremacist violence in this country to anti-fascist, you know, people that are trying to fight the type of authoritarian that Trump, authoritarianism that Trump now, you know, promotes is completely baseless. And again, the fact that Trump tries to equate that, it shows, and I think that's one of the interesting parts about the debate is, is for so many people, it's the first time they've seen that other person speak for such a long time, yeah. you know, other than little short news clips that have been shared around on social media. And it shows how clearly Trump lives in that Fox News echo chamber. You know, he's bringing up things that you would only hear about if you watched Fox News constantly. And newsflash to the people that are watching this is you're probably being misinformed when you're watching it. So, yeah, that was, um, to equate those two is just him again, trying to protect his base and, and call, basically a call to arms. And, and I will say this, and last point on that, is that a lot of people may look at this and be like, well, Dan, Stephen, you're trying to push a leftist agenda. Facts are facts, mm -hmm. and certain things are not comparable. Not everything's fake news. You know, and it, it gets frustrating, but you, when it's coming from the president, mm -hmm. it's hard for people not to think that that is true. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, I learned a long time that the, our president, Donald Trump, is a pathological liar. And, Without question. <laughs> and it's unfortunate because, again, like even at the beginning of the pandemic, I, when a national crisis strikes, people look to leadership to, to lead, and regardless of party. You know, sim similar thing after 9-11. You, you hated George Bush. You looked at George Bush to see was what, leader. what was he going to do and how was he going to respond. And Donald Trump had the moment, and he muffed the kick, and he just continues to lie and he'll continue to lie his way, you know, to his second attempt, you know, his attempt at reelection. And if he's not reelected, he's going to try and lie his way out of a prison cell. So, and, and I'll tell you this, he, he will not win the popular vote. We can say that for sure. Yep. Um, I had a question. I don't want to spend too much time okay. on it. Cause then I want, I want to get one quick. more thing in politics. Um, do you think Bernie would do better? right now against Trump if he would have got the nomination? Um, so I think on the debate stage, definitely. Um, 
you know, if you watched any of the Democratic debates, Bernie was usually taking arrows from all sorts of directions, while um, the people on the stage really handled Biden with kid gloves. So, you know, he, Biden didn't really have an opportunity to really have to defend himself last night because Trump, or the other night, because Trump just really steamrolled everything. But um, there's not a lot of energy for Biden on the Democratic side. It's more of just anti-Trump energy. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that Joe Biden is irrelevant in this election right now. Um, this is really just a referendum on Donald Trump. If he if he wins re-election, it's because people think he didn't do as bad of a job as a lot of people do think that he did. If he loses re-election, it's because of how he handled the pandemic um, and and the inciting of the race war that we've seen. You know, over I mean, the I past take couple of I, I would take this pumpkin right here over Donald Trump. <laughs> I, that's and that's what you know. There's just so much anti-Trump yeah. energy that I do think really any of the people that were on that stage uh, on the for the Democrats would be in the same position that that Biden is in. I do think Bernie again has young people excited to vote for him. Uh, there are a lot of concerning things about Biden, his his strategy uh, where he's not really reaching out to the Latino community. He's not really, he has his own issues with the, the black community. Um, and, and there's just not that energy behind it. The people that are really behind Biden, you know, especially the younger people are there just because it's, it's him or Donald Trump. And unfortunately we're in this lesser of two evils situation again. And it's, it's hard. It, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, final question, politics. We're going to move on. We're mm -hmm. going to get to more lighter stuff. Yeah. Who wins? Um, as you said, I think Biden wins the popular vote by more than Hillary won the last time. Uh, I can see that. And all, all signs point to, to, to Biden winning the election. Um, but 2020 has been a disaster. Yep. And um, I, I do know that Donald Trump is going to do everything that he can to try and steal the election. So all signs point to Biden right now, but I can very easily imagine a scenario where we go to bed on election night and Donald Trump is winning and he claims victory on the election. Biden contests it. It goes to the courts. And what has Donald Trump been doing over the past four years? And probably his most significant achievement is filling court seats around the country. Yeah. So they're going to be the ones that are deciding it. He's going to have a 6-3 favor in the Supreme Court on his side to, to decide the election. So I do think that there is a there is a path to stealing the election for him that I do think people need to to keep an eye on. <sighs> Can't believe it's this close. Right. And again, it's, <laughs> it's, it would it would just be it would be 2020. It would be the, the grand yeah. finale of, of 2020. But I think all signs point to to Biden winning. But, you know, there's still a lot that can happen over the next month. So. No, I agree. All right. Um, next section. Whether he leaves is another question on his, under his own well, power. So. Mitch McConnell said there'll be a transition if, if he does. Right. Uh, that but, may be but, him being transitioned out by Secret Moscow Service. Moscow Mitch, so. you don't really know with him anyways. So. Right. They have plenty of tricks up their sleeves. So. It's just, it's, what a, it's crazy. It's a crazy year. Crazy time to be alive. Um, we're going to go into a new section of the show that we haven't really done before. It's called Random. Okay. I'm going to ask you three random questions. Uh, first one, if you could be a member of any TV sitcom family, who would it be and why? I think uh, I would love to be like a roommate with uh, Doug Heffernan from King of really? Kings. Really? Okay. I loved that show growing up, just yep. like, you know, living in his basement, like you kick out Arthur. Yep. And I think if you turn that basement into like a, a sports man cave, I think that's a prime prime spot. That is a great show, yeah, um, and a good pick. Yeah. Uh, I would like to hang out with Arthur, though. I definitely would. He's, no, see, he's, he's, he'd get the boot, so he'd be <laughs> in the nursing home. So sorry, Arthur. Uh, next one, and if you want, you can look into the camera and say it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you had the world's attention for thirty seconds, what would you say? Hmm. I would just repeat that. We are all human and we all have a responsibility to making this planet survive. Um, so I definitely think having everyone understand that and, and understanding that the role they play and also understanding that the power that they hold, you know, there, there's a lot of power dynamics that make people feel helpless. Um, I think if, if people understood 
how much power they have when they do stand together in solidarity. I think that's something that would really drastically change uh, the direction of the, the planet. So. All right. No, no, good answer. I like that. Yeah. We do. We we all are in this together. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Oftentimes some... it feels like we're going through it alone, but that's not, we're not. not the case. <laughs> you know? uh, last question. And we've talked a lot about this election, mm-hmm. but let's just put in perspective. If you had to pick one celebrity yeah. to be president, who would it be and why? That's not even a question. It's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, I did see he got into politics really for the first time. This past go around, he just endorsed uh, Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. First time he's ever endorsed anyone, and I'm sure he, you know, the second he did that, he lost half of his fan base. But um, I, I mean, I, I do think it's honestly a realistic possibility that he does possibly run sometime in the future. Um, I'm a huge Rock fan. I just think his energy and charisma are what the people need to sort of get behind and and you know is he the most qualified you know lawmaker of of all time of course not but i just think he's a guy that um people look to 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 bring positive energy and to be uplifting and to be able to get through tough times which we are in tough times right now i i have to agree with that i actually was like somewhat hoping he would have ran because mm. we have this celebrity president yeah never held office never really he was a businessman, mm-hmm. uh, and The Rock talks about maybe running against yeah, him. Yeah, he's, he's flirted with it. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think he would be an interesting guy um, to, to see in the White House. I think he's an overall good dude, and, and the fact that you know they're bringing the XFL back. I which, did see that, yeah. Which was something I was very excited about because mm-hmm. I, I, I was loving the XFL. I know you were all in for like the four games they existed. Yeah, it was a four. I, I don't know. I got to go to one. Yeah. But uh not just that, but, you know, he's always given, you know, he was a wrestler first, but he's always willing to get back to that business, mm-hmm. too. He's also been at the very bottom. You know, he, he's he's seen what it's like to, to be, um, I think he has in his office, he has the $7, $7 yeah, that yeah. he had in his pocket when he got cut from the NFL. And I think a lot of the leaders in this country come from wealth. They come from success. They were born into it. Yeah, and you know, The Rock and Dwayne Johnson has really been to the bottom and had to work his way up. And I do think again, that's just a message that would really inspire a lot of people. Now, what somebody might debate this is yeah. that well, he was a son of Rocky Johnson, yeah, uh, who already had a foot in the door mm-hmm. in, in, in sure. wrestling. But if you know anything about The Rock's career, which I'm an expert, mm-hmm. <laughs> he uh, he did get a deal with WWF um, fairly young played for Miami or whatever, and they gave him a deal because they said, well, who his father was. And let me just tell you, the people hated Rocky Maivia, this clean-cut baby face. Mm-hmm. And he was willing to say, they hate me. Well, I'm going to make them really hate me. Mm-hmm. And came up with this whole rock persona. He's just, he's a, he's a one-of-kind talent. Yeah, and, and again, I, obviously, you know, most people who are successful have some sort of, like, power of connection yeah. that, they've, that they've had. But again, he has, re- he could have very easily been in and out quickly. Yeah. You know, it, especially with, like... Ted DiBiase's kids ne- never went anywhere. Right, could have, could have quickly been in and out easy, could have really fallen off the map after his football career ended. Um, but again, he's just, he's a guy that loves grit and, and determination and... Um, you know, he's definitely a role model for me. And you think, the other thing I think is pretty unique is that him and his ex-wife have still been able to have a partnership mm-hmm. business-wise, and they bought the XFL together. Yeah, I mean, he, again, he just seems like an all-around good dude. And, yeah. and there are very few people, especially in 2020 when you have access to information, where most people, I feel like, disappoint you at the end of the day, unfortunately. Yeah. Most entertainers, most celebrities, I don't really feel like he's done that. Um, so knock on wood here that uh, he can keep the streak going. Yeah, no, big ups to The Rock. Everybody, we all love The Rock. Uh, we'll go into sports. All right. COVID, going to have to go back to it because it obviously dominates our lives. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Three Titans players, maybe it's five now, mm-hmm. and some personnel tested positive for COVID. Um, we don't know about the Vikings yet, who they played, um, but they have decided to postpone the Steelers Titans game yeah yeah Vikings are clear um, oh are they they're in the clear um, okay but it's really just the the Titans I think they had one coach uh, linebackers coach I believe uh, was the one that 
brought it in to the um, to the locker room. Well, that's interesting that you, you know because and I don't know who the players were. They mm-hmm. could be bench players. I'm not sure. Uh, the ones that I've seen were not like of notable like starting players. So gotcha. Okay, so because I was gonna say maybe it's not transmitted as easily on the field. Mm-hmm. Um, if this keeps happening, yeah, because it's it's bound to, and I think the X uh, the XFL the NFL knows this. <laughs> Uh, this is wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what 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 did they do? How many games can you postpone? How long can the season go? Yeah, I think one notable thing that I heard Roger Goodell say before the season started is that um, he said when he was peppered about COVID and precautions and all these different what if scenarios, he said we will play a complete season, not a full season, a complete season. And by NFL standards, a complete season just means that they host a Super Bowl. So I think in the back of their minds, they are prepared fully for either weeks to be canceled okay. or that the Super Bowl gets pushed back further into February. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really thought for a while it was sort of weird that no NFL players were testing positive for anything. I mean, they're not in a bubble scenario. Um, Much like MLB. Right. They had that scare with a bunch of like a ton of false positives, but they all turned out to be clean. But this is going to be interesting. This is the first real test that the NFL has had. The NFL, not usually the best at handling, you know, crises. Um, You know, so we'll see how they react to this one. But I know for certain I have Derrick Henry or had Derrick Henry going (laughs) Monday night in fantasy football, and now I'm I'm hurting for it. Not so much. Yeah. It's interesting because – you know, everybody at this point, they remember when the Marlins yeah. tested positive, some other other teams, and everybody was like, "MLB's done, it's going to shut down." And then this this one happened, and I go, "They're not shutting down." I think it's just because the NFL is such a behemoth yeah. that you know, I, I said the same thing when uh, sports came back, and I was like, "The NFL will find a way, and they'll cut corners, they'll." take fewer precautions if, if need be, but they will find a way to have their season. There's too much money on the line. There's too many investors that are um, banking on a season happening. They'll find a way to, to make it happen. How many teams and players are affected by COVID in the process remains to be seen. We have our first one right now, and, and we'll see what sort of domino effect that might cause. I mean, and like I said with the, M- the MLB, I mean, now you get the Marlins there in the playoffs, and mm-hmm. they're doing really well. I mean, it, you know, at the end of the day, COVID is not the plague. You know, it's not like those players from the Titans are probably you bubble them or not bubble them, but you put them where they need to be. Yeah. Or it's they're not gonna they likely are not gonna die. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, if if we are having sports, then there is a level from those sport leagues that they don't care as much about COVID. Like it, if they are. If they are having sports happen, you know, if they're making sports happen, then at the end of the day, like, how much do they really prioritize COVID? Yeah. They do to an extent when they're legally told to. When they're, you know, if all of these owners could have their stadiums 100% full, I'm sure they would have it. Yeah. But they're being told that you have to limit fans into the stadium. So at the end of the day, they're really worried about their bottom line. So that's why I'm determined that the season will continue. I, I think it will no matter what. I mean, even when you look back at the Spanish flu, they did continue mm-hmm. with sports, and that was much more deadly. Right. I mean, obviously, we're more knowledgeable. I was going to say, there was a you know, you know, know. different access to information and a little different level of care, I would say, too. Yeah, for sure, and not as much money at stake Right, either. right, and it also wasn't as political as yeah. it is now. So. No, agreed. Um, baseball might bring some fans back for the what I heard was the NLCS mm-hmm. and the World Series. Yep. Yeah. What do you think? Because the Chiefs have brought back fans, mm-hmm. some distant college football has, uh, AEW, the wrestling promotion, has brought some fans in. What do you think of fans attending uh, sporting events at all? Yeah, I mean, I think, especially if it's outside, it's pretty like fair game as long as you're really limiting the amount of people. I mean, we all know, you know, we've been to the Garden. You know, they do not try and give you any room you're so, packed. right packed right you're sitting on top of the person next to you so um i think they have to do like what kansas city's doing where they're you know they're allowing 20 percent of their fans in but they're spacing them out they're making them wear masks um how much they're wearing them all the time i mean that's one of the things i think that's why i think the coaches are being like fine so seriously about having to wear them 
is because it's sort of this presentation. Like if, if, if the fans aren't happy about wearing masks, they can't really complain because the coaches and people on the sidelines are wearing them. Pete so, Carroll right, is one. <laughs> right. So I think, I think you know, whatever Belichick wears with, with like his little beak thing. Yeah. Uh, John Gruden looked like he was wearing a thong the other day. So, um, Andy Reid had the best. Right, his little, uh, <laughs> you know, welder's mask. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think if, if we're, you know, going in restaurants, if we're in schools, then, you know, sure, you want to allow a couple people to, to go to a sporting event. I'm sure the ticket prices are jacked through the roof. So if you're willing to pay that much money to go to a sporting event and be sectioned off, then... You know, I don't know. I don't know what there is to stop you. So, no, I agree, and I think it's easier for football and baseball to do it. Mm-hmm. Hockey and uh, basketball, obviously, they were in bubbles. I think it'd be harder for them. Mm-hmm. I, I I could definitely see myself getting sick from anything in the garden mm-hmm. over right. Gillette just Stadium, touching, just touching but, the seats. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know. Well, it'll be it, it'll be interesting again. Like the the NBA is in the finals right now, and hockey just wrapped up. Their seasons will start in the winter. So, and, you know, normally they're all indoor sports, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. Are they going to start in another bubble again, or are they going to play in their normal stadiums but just allow limited fans? That's going to be something weird to watch. That is going to get interesting because that's, it's going to creep up on us like everything else has. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lakers and Heat, who wins? I mean, it's not even a question that um, when the NBA decided that they were going to come back, back in, uh, you know, the... April, May, um, there's no question that, like, if, if LeBron didn't think that he had the opportunity to win a championship, he would have said no, and he probably would have made the whole thing not happen. He so, was one of the biggest, like, we need to get back. Right, right. <laughs> so I, I think it's uh, Lakers in four, maybe five. Um, I saw game one the other night, a uh, couple Heat players, starters, got, got hurt. So um, The young kid did, didn't he? Uh, Bam Adebayo and yeah. uh, Goran Dragic uh, both got hurt, and they're sort of questionable as to whether they're going to return. But you know, it's it, there's zero chance that I would bet my I would bet my house on it. <laughs> guarantee Charles Barkley, guarantee yeah. that the Lakers win this championship, yeah. and I think it'll be Lakers in four. Anthony Davis, the MVP. Okay, yeah, I, I, you know, and, 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 and with that being said, this would be LeBron's. Fourth, mm-hmm. going to be thirty six in December. Tenth final, I believe. Do you think he can win six before it's all said and done? At thir- you know, he's going to be thirty six next year. He'd be thirty seven. Mm-hmm. Can the uh, Lakers be a dynasty? I don't. You know. Um, I don't know. I mean, th- I think this year is interesting. Like, will this year hold the same credibility of a normal final, like a, a normal championship? Like, when they look back, will there be an asterisk next to this? Championship. I think this is more fair than it's ever been. This is just straight up basketball without you know people Fans yelling and points you. in the games and things you like know? that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I do think. I mean, again, if he has four, then he's certainly within striking distance. But I mean, these championships, as as we've seen with LeBron, I mean, he's been to the finals. This is his tenth time. Um, they're hard to win. Yeah. And I think that LeBron, especially last year, after not making the playoffs. That, and sat out the seat. <laughs> right. Said, I, think, right I'm done. I think um, he was super determined to come back and win it. I also think, again, and I'm no LeBron James fan. I am no LeBron. I know, I know. On the court. Yeah. On the court. Um, I like what he does off the court. But I do think it would be sort of storybook for the Lakers to win um, after Kobe dying, oh, yeah. um, after you know LeBron James probably being like the biggest athlete activist in sports for, with all this Black Lives Matter initiative going on, really stopping the league. For him to win, it would sort of be fitting. Whether he can catch Jordan, I don't. I don't really know. I mean, I think I personally think he's going to play out this contract in in L.A. When his contract ends is when his son is supposed to be like Good would most likely come into the league. Yeah, and I do think he's going to finish his career wherever uh, the son plays. I could see that. Yeah, I, I, he's definitely not getting seven because mm-hmm. uh, you know we had Dan Morris on the show the other day and he said you know he wins this one I think it's a he goes I think it's a possibility he could win six. He's getting older. Yeah, I mean, he'd yeah. have to win two more, and and I think what's going to be interesting is this series. You're going to see sort of a a passing where you're going to see Anthony Davis take over as the best player on the team. Yeah, I do think that's that's the possibility. That's why he wanted Anthony Davis there. It's the first time he's ever played with um, an All NBA player, All Defensive, uh, you know, um, Defensive Player of the Year. 
Um, Anthony Davis is probably the fifth best player in the league. I, you know, you certainly give yourself a shot at winning a title when you're playing with someone that good. So, I'm sure Anthony Davis is very happy to be there. Right, it's his first <laughs> time, first time, you know, making that far in the playoffs. And but he's, I do really think that he's going to carry, um, you know, as much as you can say carry LeBron. But um, you know, it's really LeBron and AD, and the rest of the guys get out of the way. So, no, understandable. It's going to be good and. You know, I I hate to see the Lakers tie the Celtics, but part of it is like Kobe passed away this year, and that's almost like forgotten. Right, prior to 2020, I know. I know. know. And that happened right before COVID. Yeah, February, it, I think. Right, uh, January he January? died. Yeah. It was the day of the Royal Rumble. That's right, how I okay. Yep. And then COVID came. We started hearing more grumbles about COVID in mm-hmm. February, yes. and then March is when it all just went. Yeah, to, but yeah, that's why I just said I'm no LeBron fan, but I do think. Story-wise, I always love a good story in sports, yeah. and I do think it. I mean, it's what would be the perfect storybook ending of the season with everything that's happened with the Lakers to walk away with the title. So I have to agree with that. Um, what grade would you give Cam Newton so far with the Patriots? Uh, I would say like a B. I think a B. Um, he wasn't that great against the Raiders, like passing wise. I think he had a pretty low completion percentage. Um, I give him an A for his attitude. Um, that was I was not a Cam Newton fan. I did not want him on the team. Um, I think at at the end, at the price that we got him for, I was fine with it. But I I think his his attitude has changed, and he's accepting coaching. And I really do think that he was pretty humbled by him being cut and teams get you know passing on him. Um, but play wise, I think it's been a B uh, a B so far. He's looked. Good on the ground. I think the Patriots are going to run him into the ground this year because I don't necessarily think there's a strong chance we sign him long term. Mm-hmm. So Belichick and McDaniels are going to try and you know squeeze the juice out of that orange. Um, but probably a B so far. He looked good in the Seattle game. That was the big question mark: was can he throw? And he threw in the in the Seattle game. He's looked good on the ground. I just don't know overall for the Patriots if do, if they have enough offensive talent around him to really make a run at it um, long term this season if, if there's no bigger test than this weekend yeah um, that's uh, I, I, I don't know Cam Newton in his MVP season I don't know if he could keep up with Patrick Mahomes with is not on this planet right now you know you think so. he catches uh, Brady for Super Bowls or Six, yeah. uh, I don't know I doubt it yeah. I think I think their style plays very different I could see Patrick Mahomes getting hurt at some point mm-hmm uh, which I, I don't want to see. Right, right. Um, but he plays a different game than, than Brady. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think that that team is set up for long-term success. A lot of it, lot of big contracts that... And they're missing the biggest piece of it, which is Belichick. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Belichick and Brady was the perfect storm. Mm. Yeah, it's just an interesting thing when you see a guy that young win a championship and look like the entire, you know, the he's like the sort of like the NFL's LeBron James. Yeah. And you see a guy like that with a lot of runway to, to win a lot of championships. So. I, I could see, in, in, and I don't, I'm not, this is not dogging on Patrick Mahomes at all. I could see him not being the household name that he is in four years. Interesting. We'll see. I, I could see something we'll see. happening and he's just not. Brady played a different game. Four years game. from now, we'll cut this clip. Yeah, yeah. Roll take it, it out. Uh, I think, you know, when they gave him 10 years, yeah, I thought that was crazy for a football contract. Um, I think you'll see four good years of that. I don't think you'll see a great six years of that after, after the fact. And he's probably, that girl he's with, uh, she's a little bit much. Pregnant uh, now. Yeah, then now they got a kid. You know, he's going to get a little more stressed so, out. So he, uh, it's the year of him. He bought a, uh, I think, what did he by the... It's part like, of the Royals organization Yeah, Royals, now. yeah, yeah. Um, Big year. Borat 2, coming to Amazon it. Plus. Um, how are they doing a Borat movie? People, I feel like everybody knows who Borat is. I do feel like that, but I also feel like it's been so long since the first one Oops, that there may uh, be a yeah. lot of people that are just not as familiar with, with that experience. I do remember watching that movie when I was probably too young, too. Yeah. Um, I think I was 22 when that came I was out, probably so. <laughs> in, you know, well, I, yeah, I was probably in elementary school. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it's just the perfect time. I think there's a lot of uh, dumb people that are right to be tricked well so. you know and i saw the trailer and i go well a lot of these people were old like old way old enough yeah. to know i mean how do you not know who borat is mm-hmm. 
I mean, he does the same thing, like uh, his show, This Is America, on Showtime. Great they stuff. They have a couple of uh, episodes got Bernie on Sanders. YouTube. He has a couple of episodes on YouTube that I would definitely recommend people at home watch uh, because he just, again, exposes how how easy it is to be tricked and, and how, you know, yes, what he got Bernie on compared he didn't com- really get Bernie. comparative to yeah. some of the other things yeah he didn't he just like trolled bernie Bernie but, was like what's wrong with right you? yes yeah. uh, he didn't he doesn't fall for that bs but um to see some of the other stuff i mean it's wild but that's he, the state of our you know we're, we're in sort of this alternate timeline so sasha baron cohen uh was trolling before trolling was an internet thing yeah he would troll you to your face yeah um i was just very curious when i saw that i go how do you do a borat People really don't know. Remember Borat? I mean, it's again twenty. It's perfect timing. You know, yeah. uh, it was prime. It, he's that guy's. He's a legend. He mm-hmm. really is. The, the the stuff he's pulled off. He's very um, interesting too. He's a, he is very politically active as well, yeah. like behind the scenes. So he's he's very outspoken. And he likes to troll the people that I feel like need to be trolled. Yeah. So, uh, do you have a worst movie you ever seen? Um, so I can't really think of the worst movie I've ever seen. Um. But I was talking earlier today about uh, how bad the some like superhero movies have been, and yeah. like the the Andrew Garfield Spider Man movies were brutal in my opinion. That's the uh, like the Amazing Spider Man. Yeah, like the, I never saw him. Yeah, the, those were brutal. Um, I thought the Batman versus Superman that just came out. Like, I mean, everyone wanted to see a Batman and Superman movie like together, and I thought that movie was was brutal as well. I so. did like Ben Affleck. In that movie, I, yeah, I mean, he just the the whole thing was so bad. I just thought, it, I mean, they tried to basically pull off an Avengers on the second movie, and it's yeah. just like that's impossible to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of a lot of bad movies, but I don't know. Those are the the ones that come to mind. And one of the things that came up is because one of the characters in one of those ter- terrible Spider-Man movies is actually going to be like in an upcoming Marvel yeah. Spider-Man movie, like that they have now. So. Um, but yeah, those I would not recommend those. Well, I will say that I've always now I know Thor sits on this table, but you mm-hmm. know I don't really watch the Marvel movies. Yeah. Uh, after the passing of um, Black Panther, what's, what was his name again? Um, Chadwick Boseman. I had to finally see it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Have it in my collection now. Great movie. Highly recommend Black Panther. Definitely. Let's go into blank Shout versus out. blank. My favorite segment of the show. Yeah. And you're familiar with this. I know. I'll give you. A, Give you a word or two people or something. Um, first one. I know we didn't want to talk too much wrestling, but mm. Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock? Oh, that's so tough. Uh, I think I got to say Stone Cold because he didn't have like the necessarily like the looks going for him. Uh, so he, I mean, he just had his per- really like his brash personality going for him. And I feel like he took the anti-authority thing to the next level um than the rock ever ever really did so um as much as i would i i would want the rock to be president not stone cold and i think that's that says something so yeah but the stone cold character right yep right all right here's a tough one for you yeah this is gonna be a very tough one okay all right you got to pick one though yeah donald trump or ted cruz um i would take trump because i think he's less intelligent than Ted Cruz. Like like I think that's one of the one of the positives and silver linings of Trump's presidency is that he's not a bright guy. And I think if if you gave someone with his sort of desires but was actually like bright enough to Maybe. like like that would be the scariest thing we've ever seen. Yeah. But I think Trump's an idiot and I think Ted Cruz actually, you know, I think he's an idiot too, but I think he's has his wits about him a little bit more, so all right, fair point, and, and, and Cruz just got ripped on uh, Chris CNN Cuomo. Cuomo, so if you have a chance to see that. CNN or MSNBC? Jeez, oh, I'd rather bite the Pumping bullet. Pumping the liberal agenda. I'd rather bite the no, bullet. I'm just um, I would say CNN. Um, I think that they have some good... I feel like cable cable news, anything after 5 o'clock is just garbage. Trash, yeah. um, I do like John King, who does um, like the election night coverage for CNN. Um but yeah, I would go with my. If you're if you're sick of cable news and you're interested in some other takes, uh, the Young Turks yep. and uh, the Hill Rising, I know, um, yep. two fantastic sort of anti-corporate, anti-cable 
uh, news perspectives that I, I would definitely check out. But um, I, when I watched the debate the other night, I was watching CNN. When I watch the, you know, when it's election night, I'll be watching CNN because the way John King does that board is uh, special. I do like him too. Uh, a little short on time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the last two. Last election, we had uh, two alternative candidates. We had Gary Johnson, Jill Stein. Yeah. Got to pick one. Uh, Jill Stein. All right. Yeah. I'll, I've, just, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. And here's the hardest one always of blank versus blank. But we got to know. Yeah. Because I know that you are a huge fan of both of these movie franchises. Okay. Yeah. But one has to go. Yeah. Star Wars or the Marvel movies? The um, Avengers, I guess. Yeah, I, I would say pre these last three movies for Star Wars, I would have said Star Wars. Um, and I do think like nothing gets me more excited than like the news that a new Star Wars trailer is going to drop. Um, but I just think Marvel has done a better job at it. So I mean, they've twenty three movies in a row of yeah. real. You know, not all of them have been home runs, but the fact that they were able to pull something off in twenty three movies, where they actually had a plan. And Star Wars, these last three. <sighs> Had no plan at all, um, and and I think it, it hurt them. So um, it could have been great, but I definitely think after those last three movies, I'm sort of with uh, Star Wars fatigue. But at, at some point, probably me and you should sit down and do a breakdown of those three. Uh, I'm not talking happy not to. talking an hour episode. We do about thirty minutes and say this ro- no roadmap. Yes, you know, really, I could rewrite those movies. You give me you, know. you give me a napkin and a and a pencil and i could rewrite those movies better than they came out so i'd be happy to i 100 uh, agree with that well well steven i appreciate you coming on the show it's been a lot of fun of course we'll, we'll definitely have you as a regular guest you know we, we always enjoy doing this so um but everybody uh again continue to keep your heads up wear a mask when you go places not asking for a lot um but anyways uh until next week let freedom ring <laughs>